For about two months, the Nairobi Serena Hotel became a center of attraction both nationally and internationally. It's here in the Amani room where talks on the national accord were led. Negotiations that kept the nation gazing. Would there be a political deal or no deal? What are some of the intrigues that characterized the talks and what took them so long? That the 2007 presidential election would be hotly and viciously contested wasn't a secret. After being fired from cabinet in 2005, ODM leader Raila Odinga assembled a political machinery he was confident would sweep the sitting president Mwai Kibaki out of power. On his part, in his characteristic laid-back style, Kibaki did not appear shaken or in a hurry to also marshal his charges. In fact, by early September 2007, he didn't even have a party he would be using to defend his seat. It forced his handlers to hurriedly form Party of National Unity, PNU, which had to team up with NAC Kenya, plus the official opposition party at that time, Kanu, to face off with Raila Odinga's ODM. It was an election whose stakes were high that saw for the first time in the world an official opposition leader Uhuru Kenyatta fail to run for presidency and instead support the re-election of an incumbent. The Electoral Commission of Kenya, ECK, declared that President Kibaki had trounced Raila Odinga in a tight race, despite ODM getting the highest number of members of parliament, having one in six out of the then eight former provinces. The outcome was disputed, a standoff that had begun at KICC when results were delayed. ODM Pentagon members, chief agents could hear nothing from ECK officials, while PNU stood their ground. Ten years down the line, now Kenya party leader and veteran politician Martha Wangare Karua sets the record straight on what exactly was unfolding at KICC. I was saying that time, there can only be one referee in a match. And parties to the match can never announce their results. So whatever you are saying of the referee, the referee has to announce. You come and sit here. Come and notify the seat. And announce. And announce. So what was the bone of contention between ODM and PNU that led to a heated exchange as the then Electoral Commission of Kenya, now defunct, watched helplessly? We actually saw a few mistakes. And one mistake I would like to highlight, which we never highlighted then, was the case of Chepalungu, where the votes of ODM were recorded as 337,000. When the population of Chepalungu constituency then was not even that. The IEBC quickly said it was a typographical error, and they brought another cheat showing the votes were 37,000. Actually, when the IBC said this was a typographical error, I actually genuinely believed it, only later to realize that it was a deliberate inflation of the votes of the opposite side. But I must admit that later on we were to know that even some of the PNU side's votes were exaggerated. Just like Krigra said, that both sides ex exaggerated. You see? The nation was gripped with political anxiety. Initial live broadcasts indicated Raila Odinga was ahead of President Mwai Kibaki before an order stopping the media from running results was issued. It was communicated that only ECK would make the final announcement, and for several hours, no information or results were being relayed from ECK. The clock was ticking. When we went through the, the files, we all agreed that IBC could now announce the results. But when we went to the hall, the opposition obstructed, forcing IBC to announce through the radio. Lugari Member of Parliament Ayub Savula was a senior political reporter with the standard newspaper at the time, and was among journalists who witnessed the dramatic turn of events. 
There was argument between a group led by Martha Karua and another team led by William Samoe Ruto. In fact, they almost fought Karua, Karua and Ruto over the result because Ruto at that time was on the railer side, Karua was on the Kibaki side. It reached a point the GSU now came in and surrounded the whole uh, action center. Within 10 minutes, lights were off. And that's the time they opened a path, the GSU opened a path for the chairman Kiwitu to enter a car that was parking behind KICC. And the cars drove as a convoy from KICC up to State House, where the results were now officially declared and Kibaki sworn in as a president. Mimi mwai kibaki na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za urais kwa jamhuri ya Kenya. Mwai Kibaki was declared winner that evening on 30th December 2007 and was hurriedly sworn in as darkness settled in to avoid a constitutional crisis. There was an explosion of protests in various parts of the country by ODM supporters. A trend that continued for several days and soon it became weeks. It was now a full-blown post-election violence. <laughs> Hundreds were killed. Thousands are putted from their homes and property millions destroyed. <laughs> Kenya was thrown into a political crisis, forcing the international community, specifically the African Union, to step in and save the situation. Kenya was on the brink of precipice. Remember the then president of Ghana, John Kufu, in his capacity as AU chairman, he came and paid a visit on President Mwai Kebake. And I was present during that visit. And he did suggest that something had to be done to st stop the violence in the country and to save the nation. And he suggested that we must have talks with the opposition to be mediated by somebody appointed by the AU. And he is the one who suggested Kofi Annan. However, there was a problem. PNU's side flatly rejected now South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, whom ODM wanted as part of the mediation team. In fact, Cyril Ramaphosa flew into Kenya, but information available to PNU was that uh, Cyril had, in a way, helped in financing and supporting the ODM campaigns. So he was not seen as uh, a possible uh, uh, honest broker in, 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 the, in the discussions that he was going to be probably partisan. You remember, we are leading the talks, but we are messengers of our party. When we went to consult our party, our intelligence was saying that Cyril Ramaphosa was close to the ODM brigade and to Raila Odinga. And it is not because we believed he would not be a good umpire. But you see, justice is, a, is a appearances also. It should not only be done, but be seen to be done. So for those reasons, we requested that another person do come. And it caused a diplomatic tiff. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan was given the responsibility of leading a panel of African eminent persons who would mediate between PNU and ODM to cease fire and broker a political deal to save the country, which was on the brink of precipice. The biggest challenge was bringing the two protagonists on the negotiating table.
We were not even shaking hands. And I think it was after three days that the talks were moved to a more appropriate atmosphere and bigger room to, to give way, you know, to give room even to a secretariat and all. And uh, Kofi Annan ensured that at least we had informal uh, sitting where we conversed, shook hands and all that, you know. So it was a very tense uh, situation. And so on. But uh, my colleagues like Mother Karua would not shake hands with anybody for a start. Uh, you remember she had some acrimonious exchanges with even Ben Mukapa at one point, with Kofi Annan himself at another. Initial stages were extremely difficult. Yeah. The initial 10 days or so were extremely difficult uh, to get people to, to start thinking and talking honestly. Uh, on the need to bring the country together. Uh, because you, you, you must talk about unifying the country without completely disillusioning your constituency. You see, there the, the, the are people who voted for us then and people who believed that we had won the election. All right? And that election had been stolen uh, from us. Um, this other side now had the, the instruments of state uh, with them. They controlled the police, they controlled the army, and now they're in office. But even as they sat on that negotiating table, each delegation had their own list of irreducible minimums. Our first choice was to go for a fresh uh, presidential elections. Uh, and we said if that was not possible, then we can have a, a grand coalition where power is shared and that there should be portfolio balance uh, depending on the strength of the members of parliament. But the executive authority will be shared between the president and the prime minister. So this, those instructions were quite clear. But you know, on the PNU side already, they had appointed ministers. Uh, Kibaki was sitting in State House, uh, and uh, th this question of sharing of power uh, was something they didn't want to hear about. Uh, and then, um, secondly, we had said also if we have to share power, then we have to constitutionalize the arrangement. The final point for PNU was that the accord was not going to be in the Constitution that there will be no amendment to the Constitution. Those were my instructions, you know? But the president on his own went and agreed to the accord being entrenched in the Constitution. We had hardliners on both sides of the divide. We had hardliners in the, on the PNU wing at that time. And uh, we also had hardliners on the, on the uh, ODM side, um, people who, were extremely passionate in, uh, in, in terms of the position that they had taken. Not once, not twice, talks at the basement Amani room at the Nairobi Serena Hotel would be adjourned abruptly, at times suspended. It can now be revealed that that was occasioned by powerful individuals who continued pulling strings behind the scenes in the PNU coalition. There were people, uh, particularly from uh, the government side, who were extremely cagey at that time. And um, they did not trust who was there to negotiate on their behalf. The instructions were all coming from the president, who of course would consult with the larger group. And I think why it appeared that we are the ones, we were the ones calling for recess more. Remember, ODM had nothing to lose. They are asking for a share of power that they don't have. The PNU side seemed to be in such a situation where they could not seem to be talking independently. I think in their back room, where I think you had... Uh, the, the people like the then Michuki and others who are somewhere. It was like uh, these people could not 
uh, even put a comma or a full stop. Yeah.